Can the rice thrown at weddings prove fatal to birds? Hey folks, you might have heard this one before. Throwing uncooked rice at weddings can be deadly for birds because it makes their stomachs explode. Sounds pretty wild, right? This myth got a big boost back in 1996 when columnist Ann Landers warned that birds are in danger of exploding after eating uncooked rice. But guess what? The USA Rice Federation quickly debunked this. They pointed out that many migrating ducks and geese actually eat rice from winter-flooded fields to fatten up and get strong for their migration. They even said that uncooked milled rice is no more harmful to birds than rice in the field. So next time you're at a wedding, don't worry about the rice. It's not going to hurt our feathered friends. Do alligators live in the New York sewer system? All right, let's dive into one of the most famous urban legends. Baby alligators living in the New York sewer system. The story goes that New Yorkers bring back baby alligators from their Florida vacations, and when the gators get too big, they flush them down the toilet. Supposedly, these gators thrive in the sewers, living off rats and raw sewage. Sounds like something out of a horror movie, right? But here's the truth. Not a single sewer worker has ever reported seeing an alligator down there. Plus, alligators from Florida need much warmer temperatures than what you'd find in a New York sewer. So, it's safe to say this tale is nothing but a myth. Do penguins fall over backwards while watching aeroplanes flying overhead? This one's pretty funny. The idea that penguins topple over backwards while watching planes fly overhead. Picture thousands of penguins craning their necks, then falling like dominoes when a plane passes by. It's a cute image, but unfortunately, it's just a cartoon fantasy. Back in November 2000, researchers spent a month studying this falling penguin phenomenon. Richard Stone, one of the researchers, summed it up perfectly. Not one king penguin fell over when helicopters came over Antarctic Bay. As the aircraft approached, the birds went quiet and began walking away from the noise. So, penguins are much more steady on their feet than the myth suggests. Do lemmings frequently kill themselves by leaping off cliffs and into the sea? Here's a myth that's so entrenched it even inspired a video game. The idea that lemmings commit mass suicide by jumping off cliffs. In reality, lemmings don't deliberately leap to their deaths. If there's an explosion in the lemming population or a shortage of food, they might migrate, and some could accidentally fall off cliffs during the chaos. But this isn't intentional suicide. It's just an unfortunate accident. Lemmings are more likely to fight each other for resources than to deliberately take their own lives. What is a camel hair brush made from? Okay, this one might surprise you. You'd think a camel hair brush is made from, well, camel hair. But nope, camel hair brushes are often made from the hair of just about any animal except camels. Camel hair is actually too woolly for brushes. These brushes can be made from the hair of goats, squirrels, bears, ponies, or sheep. And sometimes it's a blend of more than one type of animal hair. So the next time you're using a camel hair brush, remember, it probably doesn't have any camel hair in it at all. Will a mother bird reject her baby? If the chick is handled by a human being, We've all heard this one. If you touch a baby bird, the mother will smell human on it and reject it. But this is totally wrong. Birds actually have a pretty terrible sense of smell. This misconception is often spread with the best intentions, to protect birds. Many people want to help when they see a baby bird out of its nest. In reality, fledglings spend a lot of time out of the nest learning to fly, so it's best to leave them alone and let them get on with growing up. What color is a purple finch? This one's a head-scratcher. The purple finch isn't purple at all. The male purple finch is more red or crimson, while the females are a brown-gray fleck. They're similar in size to sparrows and are popular with bird watchers because they hang around feeders for quite a while. Purple finches usually nest in coniferous forests, using small twigs and fibers to build their nests. Their eggs are green-blue with spots in black or brown, and they typically lay about four or five eggs. So despite the name, there's no purple in sight. Is the daddy longlegs the world's most poisonous creature? You might have heard that the daddy longlegs is the world's most poisonous insect, but don't worry, it doesn't pose a threat to humans. Its mouth is too small to bite us. This is actually a bit of a mix-up. The word poisonous implies it would harm us if we ate the insect. 
the correct term should be venomous. In the UK, the crane fly is often called a daddy longlegs, and it's not venomous at all. Some spiders are also referred to as daddy longlegs, like the fulcid spider, but there's no clear way to tell how venomous or poisonous they really are. What is catgut made from? Despite its name, catgut has nothing to do with cats. It's a strong cord made from the intestines of animals, usually sheep and horses. These intestines are stretched, chemically treated, and twisted together to make the cord. Catgut is used for stringing musical instruments like violins and harps, for some surgical sutures, though this is becoming less common, and even for stringing tennis rackets. So, while the name might sound gross, catgut is pretty useful stuff. Are elephants afraid of mice? The image of a giant elephant quivering on a stool because of a tiny mouse is classic cartoon comedy, but in reality, it has no basis in fact. Elephants are very brave and have terrible eyesight, so they're unlikely to even see a mouse, much less be scared by one. This rumor might have started because elephants can show distress if there's a movement nearby that they can't identify. But the idea of something so big being scared of something so small is just too good a contrast to pass up for a funny story. Are piranhas a dangerous, man-eating fish? While piranhas are definitely not pets you'd want to cuddle with, the stories about them stripping the flesh off live humans are pretty exaggerated. In most reported cases, the human was already dead from other causes before the piranhas started their feast. However, piranhas are vicious and will bite people, especially to protect their brood. This happens more in dammed areas where their numbers build up. Piranhas mainly live in South American rivers and lakes, and they are carnivores, feeding on other fish and occasionally taking a nibble on a human leg. Do chameleons change color to match their surroundings? Chameleons are famous for their color-changing abilities, but they don't actually change color to blend in with their surroundings. This myth probably comes from the fact that they can change color and are usually hard to spot in their natural habitats. Chameleons change color based on their mood, not for camouflage. They're usually green-brown and move slowly, mimicking a leaf blowing in the wind. They also stay still for long periods, making them very difficult to spot. Do ostriches bury their heads in the sand? The idea that ostriches bury their heads in the sand is so famous that people use it as a metaphor for ignoring danger. But ostriches don't actually do this. When they're scared or threatened, ostriches put their head and neck on the ground. From a distance, this might look like their heads are buried in the sand, but their heads and necks are just lighter in color and blend in with the sand. So at no point does an ostrich actually stick its head in the sand. Do toads give you warts? The warty appearance of a toad's skin has led to the false belief that touching a toad will give you warts. This is completely untrue. The warts on a toad are not an infection that can be passed on to humans. Warts in humans are caused by germs entering the skin and causing cells to reproduce rapidly. While humans can pass warts to each other, it's unlikely and they're only mildly infectious. Toads, however, are totally harmless when it comes to warts. Do cats always fall on their feet? We often hear that cats always land on their feet, but if a cat falls from a very small height, it might not have enough time to turn the right way up. However, cats have an incredible ability to right themselves in midair. Studies have shown that cats falling from greater heights tend to spread themselves out, like a flying squirrel, which helps them avoid serious injuries. But remember, this doesn't mean every cat survives a fall from a great height. It's just that they have a better chance thanks to this ability. Does the average person really swallow eight spiders per year? This one is totally untrue and was actually started as a rumor to see what people would believe when sent information by email. In 1993, Lisa Holst, wrote an article for a PC professional magazine about how gullible people can be with information from the internet. She included the fact about swallowing eight spiders a year to make her point, and it was circulated all over the internet. People are still stating it as a fact today, proving that Holst's point was well made. Is rat urine deadly to humans? In the late 1990s, Scare stories started circulating online about people dying after drinking from drinks cans contaminated with rat urine. 
the emails claimed rat urine was lethal to humans. But this is just another urban myth. No one has died from drinking from a can tainted with rat urine. The urine or feces from a healthy rat would not harm humans. Only if the rat was ill could there be a remote possibility of disease, but it certainly wouldn't be transmitted by drinks cans. Will iguanas only grow to the size of their cage? Kids trying to convince their parents to get them an iguana as a pet often claim that the iguana will only grow to the size of its cage. This implies that the iguana will be easy to manage. But this isn't true. If well-fed and cared for, iguanas can grow up to five or six feet long. It's recommended that an iguana's enclosure be at least twice the length of the iguana. So, an iguana is definitely not a low-maintenance pet. Are cats dangerous to pregnant women? Doctors used to tell women that living with a cat during pregnancy could be harmful and that they should get rid of the animal. But this is a mix-up of the facts. The concern for pregnant women is the parasitic disease toxoplasmosis, which can be dangerous to an unborn baby. However, this can only be contracted by handling the cat's feces. So, as long as a pregnant woman avoids cleaning the litter tray, there's no reason why she and her cat can't live happily together. Did the Tyrannosaurus Rex live in the Jurassic period? Thanks to the movie Jurassic Park, many people think the mighty Tyrannosaurus Rex lived in the Jurassic period. But in reality, T. rex roamed the Earth during the Cretaceous period. The Jurassic period started about 210 million years ago and lasted for 70 million years. The Cretaceous period began about 85 million years ago and lasted for roughly 20 million years. And while T. rex is often shown as green, no one really knows what color it was. Not even Steven Spielberg. <laughs>